Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new painting video. This time I chose to paint a bunch of bright red cherry tomatoes. I always feel painting round objects somewhat difficult, so filming this video was like taking up a challenge for myself while also sharing my process on how I create the intense shades and highlights on the tomatoes. For this painting, I used the pen set from Mangil. It's really convenient to have a range of colors that I could choose from right away. From orangey scarlet to the deeper permanent rose, I might also use a rose mather and crimson lake. And there are also several green hues that are suitable for this painting. This is the drawing template, which is available for download in my template library. And I already had the drawing transferred to the watercolor paper. So now my desk and art supplies are all set up. Let's move on to see my painting process. For this session, I started off with painting the stems because it's easy. So a tip for you is that if you've ever felt anxious or overwhelmed when you're about to start a new painting because you don't know how or where to begin or you're afraid to make mistakes, just start at where you feel is the easiest because once you have taken the first step, the second step will become less overwhelming and then you will slowly and eventually get into the flow. So now I'm putting in some green shades for the stands. My objective with the initial layers is always to mark out the different segments or sections with the light wash and also to apply some preliminary shades and tones if necessary. I'm using mainly olive green here. So just carefully apply the watery paint onto the narrow areas. I was using the red dot spotter brushes from Rosemary & Co. The brushes have shorter bristles, which gives me better control of my brush strokes. Now using a slightly darker green to create some shades. I just applied them lightly and this is just the initial stage. Moving on to the tomatoes, I first prepared two shades of red here, scarlet and permanent red. I used them as the base color to fill up the tomatoes, directly wet on dry onto the paper. And I carefully avoided the circle, which is the highlight area on the surface of the tomato. Okay, so actually for narrow areas like these, I should have changed to a smaller brush. Fortunately, this brush has a rather pointed tip, so I was able to safely fill up these tiny areas. But it will still be a good practice to change the brush if you want to prevent any painting mishap here. So I just continued to fill up all the cherry tomatoes with the red paint. The red colors might look very saturated when first applied onto the paper, but they'll become lighter once it's dry. Next, I want to soften the hard edges of the highlight circles using a slightly damp brush. I gently scrubbed or blended the edges so that the circle now looks softer. If the blending happened to remove some pigment, I just reapplied a little bit of paint. So I continued to do the same for the other tomatoes.
Now I'm ready to apply the second layer of paint to the fruits. I added a deeper red to my palette and the consistency of the paint is also slightly thicker now. For the second layer, my objective is to create and build the form of the tomatoes. I am now using my favorite dam brush technique. I first applied the paint on a small area and then blended it out with the damp brush. As I painted, I intentionally applied my brush strokes following the shape of the tomato. From the photo, you can see that the left side of the tomatoes are generally brighter than the right side. So as I painted from the left to the right side of the fruit, I increased the intensity of the red color. Here I used, uh, I think it's Crimson Lake, if I remembered correctly, to add a bit more definition on the edges around the tomato. The edges look a bit hard, so I'm going to soften it. This is basically the technique and steps that I use to finish painting the rest of the tomatoes. So here I'm going to show you the process of painting another one. From the photo, I noticed there's some shine along this side. So I used a damp brush to wet this area, then lifted up the paint with the paper towel. Now I moved back to working on the stems to add shadings. For the stems, I painted more loosely but still referring to the reference photo. Olive green was still my main green paint, but if I needed it to be darker, I would mix in some indigo. For it to be brighter, I would add in some yellow green. To make a warmer green, I would mix in some red or brown. And using just a little paint every time.
Now for the final layer, I wanted to really intensify the colors of the tomatoes. What I was doing is basically adding more pigment and using the same damp brush technique as before. For this really dark area here, I used a mix of Van Dyke Brown and Permanent Roast. I had to be gentle with my brush strokes to avoid lifting up the paint below, even though it's already dry. I did really like how this tomato looked. I think the edges were too hard and dark, but I will come back to fix it later. Apply more paint here to enhance the shine. So now I'm going to fix the tomato that I didn't like. By using an orangey red, I wanted to glaze it over the harsh dark tone underneath. Lifted up some paint here and softened the hard edges. Now adding finishing touches to the stamps as well to enhance the shades and shadows. And this time I made sure I used a really small brush. I hope you have enjoyed watching my painting process. If you wish to download the Cherry Tomatoes drawing template, do sign up for my newsletter and you will be able to download it from my subscriber-only library. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. Lastly, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel. So this bunch of red juicy looking cherry tomatoes are done. Thank you for watching. Bye!